A cladogram is a branching diagram of relationships. It is a hypothesis of relationships. And so this is a cladogram. And we have our branching diagram. If we follow those branches all the way down to their bases, this would be a node. And the nodes are going to represent common ancestors. We know that vertebrates, these are animals that all have vertebrae. Okay, we established that early on. So if we look at turtles and tigers and sharks, and then we throw in a jellyfish. So these are vertebrates here, and the jellyfish, we would call this an outgroup. Okay, it's a group outside of your groups of interest. You would use that older, more basal group to help you figure out which features are ancestral. Character state would be the flavor that that character takes on. And it's those shared characters that we want to look at. When we say the word clade, we just mean all of the descendants of a single common ancestor. So if we look at these images here, everything that's outlined in a box is a clade. We could also draw a box around this chunk here. Remember, the node tells you common ancestor. That is a clade. Okay. We could also draw a big old box over all of these, and that would be a clade. Is this a clade? Why is it not a clade? Okay. We didn't get everything. We didn't draw a circle big enough. We've got shark. We've got tiger. Okay, so we have this node, but then turtles are up here, and we didn't include them. We didn't include all descendants of the single common ancestor. Okay, so that's why that would not be a clade. All right, so now we're going to look at a couple different groups looking at four different characters, but we want to think about how we would do this if we were just looking at the characters. Okay, so we'll start with vertebrae. So when we are coding character states, again remember vertebrae would be our character, and then the character states here, um, I'm using zeros and ones, we give zero for the ancestral state, and because we know already that jellyfish are outgroup Okay, they are not invertebrates. We're going to use the character state in jellyfish to assign what the ancestral state is. So the ancestral condition for this character, vertebrae, would be lacking vertebrae. So they get a zero, whereas everything else gets a one up here. If we look at skin with horny keratinized scales, okay, jellyfish, they do not have this. Okay, so the absence of these things would be given a character state of zero. So turtles, they have scales. Crocodilians have scales. Birds have scales. But bats do not have scales. Okay, bats, we know they're mammals. Bats have fur. Okay, so bats would get a character state of zero here because they lack skin with horny keratinized scales. Whereas turtles, cracks, and birds would all get a one because they do have that feature present. LJF, this stands for lower jaw fenestra. Jellyfish, they don't have this feature. So they would get coded as zero. Turtles also have no lower jaw fenestra. So if we look at the turtle, lower jaw right here, it has no um, holes in that bone. So that would get a character state of zero. Also in bats, we don't have a lower jaw fenestra. So if we look at this first feature here, vertebrae, we know all these groups are vertebrates and are going to grouped together based on that feature. So we can write jellyfish down here on the most basal line on our tree. And then we can map our character, vertebrae, onto our tree right here because everything up here, everything above where we put this little hash mark and write vertebrae, everything above has vertebrae. So vertebrae here would be a shared feature. It is a shared derived feature. For vertebrates because it is something that has it's new in vertebrates and they all possess it and so here's another vocabulary word synapomorphy okay? a synapomorphy is a shared derived feature um, a synapomorphies are what we use to distinguish clades then we look at the next feature here skin with horny scales we see ones for turtles crocs and birds that tells us that turtles, crocs, and birds are all more closely related to each other based on this character state. And bats do not have that. We don't have to worry about where to put jellyfish because we already put them over here. 
Okay, so if we put scales here, we can pull the bats out. Bats have vertebrae, but they do not have scales. Now we're left with the other three taxa that we have to put on our tree, the crocs, the turtles, and the birds. So if we look at that lower jaw fenestra, and at this point we have multiple characters, so we also have to introduce another term. So synapomorphy, this is a shared derived character. A plesiomorphy is a primitive or ancestral feature. It's shared, it's common to all the groups, but it doesn't tell you anything new about how they're related. So if we look right here, vertebrae tells us that these groups are all most closely related to each other. At this level, vertebrae is a synapomorphy. It is a shared derived feature. But once we get up here and we're looking at these groups and we're trying to figure out how they're related to each other, we can't do that just by knowing they have vertebrae. Vertebrae at this level is not a shared derived feature. It is shared, but it's a shared ancestral feature. It doesn't tell you a thing about how to put the turtles and the crocodiles and the birds on this tree. But scales at this level would tell you something about that. Okay? The bats don't have scales, but the other groups do. So you can have traits, the very same trait can be a synapomorphy at one level of your tree, but be a plesiomorphy and uninformative at a different level of your tree. It's all relative to where you're looking. So then if we look at these guys here, we've got turtles and crocs and birds to put on our tree. Turtles, we know, don't have that lower jaw fenestra. They have a zero there, so we're going to want to put the crocs and the birds together in a clade sharing a common ancestor. So we can do that by putting them out on this branch, grouping them by that lower jaw fenestra. The turtles come out before that feature. Okay, so now we've used these characters, we mapped the character states onto a table, and we figured out their relationships. Now this is a pretty simple tree, and I have an activity for you guys to do where we're going to place a stematist. Okay, we've got these four different creatures here that you have gone out and discovered. So we've got various characters here that you can see looking at them. You are the systematist. Okay? You can work together on this, but what I want you to do is sort of work through how you would do this. Figure out what your character states are going to be. You can work together. We'll go through this in a couple minutes after most everyone's had a chance to get through it. Okay, but what would be the next character that we'd want to look at? Which character sticks as many of these groups, B, C, and D, together? Okay, eyes on stalks, because three of them have it. We only have three more things to put on this tree, so you can really easily draw your other lines. We put stalks here. Now we've got to figure out how B, and C, or B, C, and D are related to each other. Okay, we know that stalks goes in this position. Now we look again. What is the next character that you use as many of them together as possible? Okay. And you just keep doing this over and over again. So feet. Feet is going to group C and D together. That's going to make these most closely related to each other in a clade that everyone has feet. Okay. Now I put C here and D here. This could be D and this could be C. It doesn't matter because it can spin on that node. Right. The only one left is B. Okay, so we can stick B on here, um, but then we have some other features like antennae and spines. Okay. You only have spines in B, you only have antenna in D. So what do you do with those? Spines are only in B, so you would just draw that here because only B has it. Antennae are only here. Now once I stick antennae here and write it out there, I can no longer just go into PowerPoint and scoop C over here and D over here. Okay, because this line here is the only one that has antennae written on it. So make sure you remember these nodes all spin. And so there are probably at least four other ways that we could draw this exact same tree. Now that you've done it, do you have any questions?